Yeah. I know. <laughs> Text me. My grandbaby kept saying, no. I said, huh? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, ma'am. I said, oh, okay. I said, we, I'm going to keep on saying, huh, until you get it right. <laughs> if your daddy got to say, <laughs> yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am, you <laughs> got to say. Do a laugh right on over here to this camera. <laughs> Hurry up. We don't got all day. They already recorded. You beg to come. You need to come. Get up here. Come on, come on. Get up here. Our scripture this evening comes from First Peter, chapter five, verse eight and nine. Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him. Stand firm in the faith because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of sufferings. Father God, again, we uh, come acknowledging you as God, Jehovah, the creator, the only God. And we thank you for being who you are, for your divineness, for your mercy, for your grace, for your power. And we just thank you, Lord, that you still claim us as your children. Thank you for accepting us into your family, Lord God. And we just thank you for watching over us all day long and taking care of us. Yes. Blessing us with all of our needs, Lord God. And you bless a lot of us with some of our wants, Lord God. Forgive us now of our sins. We do realize we're saved, but we're saved by your mercy and grace, Lord God. We thank you having dealt with us according to our sins, Lord, because if you had, we wouldn't be here this evening. We lift up the Bible study tonight, Pastor Haynes. Bless his health and his strength and give him clarity as he teach your word, Lord God. Now, help us to open up our hearts tonight and Help us, Lord, to learn something new and fresh from your word that will help us to be better Christians. Yes. And we want to take what we learned tonight, Lord God, and to live it, apply it to our everyday living. We lift up our church as a whole, Lord. We thank you for Bethany and all that you've done for Bethany. Bless this coming Sunday's worship service, Lord God. And we want to glorify you, Lord. It's all about you. Bless the pastor in the sermon on Sunday, Lord God. Bless the choir members and the musicians, the ushers, the deacons. Keep us safe in the place of worship, Lord God, and help us to give you the glory which you are due. And then, Lord, we lift up our churches, open in your name. Every man, woman, boy, and girl you call to preach, to pastor, your ministers, your evangelists. Bless them, bless their efforts, Lord God. Holy Spirit, touch those people who are not saved. Help them to realize they need Jesus in their lives. And he is a free gift, willing to come in and to save them right now. But they first must ask. And if they ask, you'll come in right now, wherever they are, and you'll save them on the spot. Yes. So we lift up our, the people that are sick, mentally, some physically, some are disabled. Have mercy on them, Lord, and work through your doctors, nurses, and medicines, and strengthen them. Then you've got some children that are bereaved of loved ones. Comfort them as they go through this dark period in their lives, Lord God. So we love you. We thank you for who you are. Thank you, Jesus, for loving us so much. You came all the way from heaven and took flesh upon you. And then you lived among us and you preached and you taught. But most of all, you went to Calvary and hung on that wooden cross, shedded your precious blood, not for your sins, but for our sins. We thank you, Father God, for raising Jesus from the dead. Because if he had not got up from the dead, we'd still be lost in our sins. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Continue to dwell within us and guide us and help us to be the people you want us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Father God, I ask you just to cover us tonight. Yes. Cover us with your Holy Spirit, Father. Thank you for us. Thank you for allowing us to just have breath in our bodies today. 
Father God, we ask you for your protection today. Guide us, your strength, and just to be in your will, Father. We just thank you for just being who you are, Father. Yes, Lord. Giving us your grace and mercy. We thank you for the blood of Jesus that our Yes, Lord. We thank you for just sending your angel, Father, to help us each and every step of the way. Father God, we lift up the speakers shut in that are here, that can't be here, the ones that are watching online. We just ask you whatever each and every one of us are going through, whatever that if we're dealing with, that you just cover us. Yes. God, Father God, we ask you to touch each and last one of us in this circle. Each and the last one of us that are here members at that seat, we ask you to just touch us and guide our minds, Lord. Yes. We lift up the service tonight. Yes. We ask Pastor Henry that you would just touch him, Father, and just anoint his mind and his words with what you want him to say, Father. Yes, yes. Lord. We ask you to touch Becky in a special way. Just align our hearts with each other, Father, so that we may fellowship with one another. And that we may take your word, Father, and minister to others. Yes. We ask you, Father, to touch the choir this Sunday as we sing your songs, Father, and help save our souls. We ask you, Father, to just give us understanding. Yes. The things that we can't change, the things that we know we can't change, Father, we just ask you for your, your guidance, Lord. We just ask you to just protect each and every one of us yes, from Lord. things that are unseen and unheard. Yes, Lord. We ask you, Father, the ones that are near us and the ones that are sent to destroy us, Father, that you just protect us, Father. Have us open our minds so that we know, Father. Yes. I ask these things in your son, Jesus Christ's name, Amen. 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 Lord, thank you for your protection. Amen. 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 Lord, please watch over your secret shedding. Lord, please let everybody be safe from the storm yesterday. Amen. Our precious Master, so we thank you for another opportunity to come into your house and worship. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for letting us lay down last night and letting us rise again this morning. We thank you for another opportunity, our Heavenly Father, to walk this earth. Because today was not promised to us, my Heavenly Father, but you thought enough of each and every one of us, our Heavenly Father, to give us another opportunity to please you. And we just thank you for that. We thank you for your grace and your mercy that you put going down on us, my Heavenly Father. We thank you for the favor that you put over our lives, my Heavenly Father. You keep blessing us even though we're not entitled to these blessings, and we thank you for that. We thank you for another opportunity to just come into your house and hear a word, my Heavenly Father, to fill our bodies and our minds, my Heavenly Father. And we thank you that for that. We thank you for putting a hedge of protection around us today, my Heavenly Father. Because we don't know what could have happened, my Heavenly Father, but you know what could have happened. And that you put that hedge of protection around us, my Heavenly Father, and kept us safe all day long. And we just thank you for that. We thank you for putting a hedge of protection around us and letting that storm pass each and every one of us, my Heavenly Father. And that we didn't have any major damage, my Heavenly Father, that we were able to walk away from it, my Heavenly Father. We just praise you for that. We thank you for just being on the throne and still in control of this world, my Heavenly Father. We praise you for sending your son at Calvary, my Heavenly Father, to just die for our sins, my Heavenly Father, because we're not entitled to it, but you thought enough of each and every one of us, my Heavenly Father, to do it, and we just thank you for that. We just ask you right now, my Heavenly Father, to touch each and every member of Bethany, my Heavenly Father. You know what they're in need of, my Heavenly Father. You know what their households are in need of, my Heavenly Father. Just touch them right now, my Heavenly Father. Give them what they're in need of, my Heavenly Father. Not what they're in wants, what they want, my Heavenly Father, but what they need, my Heavenly Father. And if it's your will, my Heavenly Father, just touch each and every one of them, my Heavenly Father, from the top of their heads to the bottom of their feet, my Heavenly Father. Just give them strength right now. Remove all anxiety from them. Remove all worry, my Heavenly Father. Just let them know that you're still on the throne and you're still in control. And all battles are yours, my Heavenly Father. If they just lift up their hands to you, my Heavenly Father, you'll take control of it, my Heavenly Father. We just ask you right now, we're going to step back, my Heavenly Father, and let you step in, my Heavenly Father, and just take over, my Heavenly Father. We ask you right now for a new word tonight, my Heavenly Father. Open up our minds, my Heavenly Father, that we can just... Oh, take in this words, my Heavenly Father, and not just hear them, but use them in our daily lives, my Heavenly Father. We just need to discern your voice so that we can do your will and not our will, my Heavenly Father. I just praise you for all that you've done, all that you're doing, my Heavenly Father, because you've done so much. 
It's just not even enough time to praise you for all the things that you that you have done. I just thank you for your son. I thank you for just being who you are. And I praise you right now in your daughter's son's name. Amen. 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 Uh-uh, somebody say no ma'am. But she had that for the virus. Baby, we live for real, for real, for real. This is how we rolling. <laughs> Good. He kept trying. He kept fiddling with the air condition. Didn't. It didn't work. Look, I ain't gonna complain. I'm just look. I'm just hoping I got some lights when I get home. Yeah, I'm hoping I have some today when I get home. Look, I keep checking my cameras. <laughs> I was like, maybe here. Who said that? Where's Dorothy? I'm going to slap both of y'all. I can hear that old lady. She can't even get no more. Friend, I Oh. He won't. He won his own spot. Yeah, ain't nothing like your own spot. I tell you, ain't nothing like it. Ain't nothing like being in your own stuff. Yeah. Cause I even thought about getting a room up here at the Double Tree, but I was like, I want to go. I want to be in my own spot. <laughs> Just. <laughs> I'm being there in the dark, hot, <laughs> but it's but I'm in my spot. <laughs> these two, these two. <laughs> Who was running across the parking lot? Me. All I could see was heels flying. <laughs> 
Yeah. I'm going to my car to get my tire. Yeah. I'm driving off so fast. Yeah. <laughs> he said, really? Yeah, I mean, look. <laughs> <laughs> it just went right over my head. I, really, I, I guess I was thinking about my tomatoes. That's me. <laughs> Boy, I'm about to get up with the sword again. That's me. That, to, that. Look, I'm trying not to knock this door. potato off. Yeah. Well, you're walking out of that door to his truck. <laughs> Right there. I said, stay here until I go get the top. So I said to him, say, you might should tow that boy again. <laughs> then I got my hand on the top, and it, that sucker speeding on so fast. <laughs> <laughs> the smoke almost is not there. He said, you got to check out all the tight belts. So that's my, that's my deacon looking at this pastor. Yeah. Um, I'm so sorry, my trustee. <laughs> you know, you know I don't know, Doc. I thought I did, but all you had to do was take, was take was I just take it wrap around one of the hangers in my office. Yeah. You know, he was going right over there. Yes, sir. Sit on. He just was stopping. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs> oh, well. Mike put it in my car by mistake to. I don't have a one emergency tie. Yeah. Oh, okay. No matter what suit I wear, it matches it. You know. yeah. I wanted to make sure I got it in case something happened. I don't have nobody helping me. Oh, man. <laughs> for you, man, I'd be in bad shape. You see what? <laughs> see what you had to do to benediction something? <laughs> How many preachers you see around here? I have to. How's everybody doing today? Good. Oh, doing great. Well, y'all ready tonight, huh? Yep. It's going to be a good one, boy. Y'all going to like this one, boy. Fired up from last week. Well, we got to still go. We got to finish it up. I, didn't, I couldn't finish that prophecy. That prophecy test. That was pretty. We say prophecy is not foretelling, but what? For. For telling. For telling. For telling. F O R T H. And God talks to us to tell us what to say. So we say that Joseph. Had a uh, dream. Those had a dream. All right, turn to First uh, Corinthians chapter thirteen. First Corinthians chapter thirteen, verses nine and ten. Kind of get our whistles wet. We are very blessed to have the Bible, but Joseph didn't have the written word of God. All he had was the word God put in his heart, the prophetic word of God. And since that was all he had, I believe he held on to it tightly. He held on to it tightly. But we are doubtfully blessed today because we are blessed to have God's written word in the Bible, which is our standard, and we must hold to it, and we are always best to have God's prophetic word, and we must hold to it that as well. Written word, prophetic word. Somebody can read that for me? You said 1 Corinthians 15 and what? 13. Chapter 13. Oh. Verse 9, I don't understand how they, the same people always miss the chapter. <laughs> I mean, I have the same problem in the day session, too. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. Read, read uh, 10 to it. That was 15. That was 10 too? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. But when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. For we know in part. We know in part. Read yours, Henry. 
Mary says, Mary, we know so little even with our special gifts and the preaching of those most gifted is still so poor. But when we have been made perfect and complete, the need for these inadequate special gifts will come to an end and they will disappear. All right. We talk about dreams and destiny. God always gives us a dream. He basically gives us his plan for our destiny. His plan for our life. The problem is clarity. What's God and what's not. Uh, let's say in the case of Joseph. Didn't have no Bible. Because we say, if I want to judge the word, or test the word that God gives me, the dream he chose me. How do I test the word? The dream. Or whatever he's revealed to me. We need confirmation from God. Yeah. Okay. What do you mean by two? If God gives me a prophetic word, I need to judge it. How do I judge what he what I think he gave me? Yeah. Y'all write this down. Okay. You judge the prophetic word. You judge the dream with the written, written word. Or you judge the prophecy with God or God's word. I test Test the word, the prophecy, the dream, with God's word. I'm going to be able to judge whatever it is. Look, he said, he said, he said. What did Clint say? He said, we, we know in part. Is that what he said? Mm -hmm. And we prophesy in part. And we prophesy in part. Okay. In other words... Joseph had a dream. He thought he had all of it. But he didn't have all the dream because his interpretation of the dream was wrong. Mm -hmm. He only had a part. Mm -hmm. Y'all remember? Yes. We fast forward. When Jacob dies, <laughs> he got a better understanding of the dream. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Y'all follow? Mm -hmm. Well, the first part, he had a part of the dream. He misunderstands what the dream is all about. He gets a clear revelation on the end when he gets a better knowledge of what the dream is. Now, his brothers, they feel like Joseph is going to do what? Or kill him, huh? Mm -hmm. Because they, they think he thinks like they think. Mm -hmm. But he's not like that. He said, you meant it for evil, but God. Huh? You see what I'm talking about? He ain't worried about what they say. He not even worried about what he say. He said, this is what God wanted. God wanted me to bless you. God wanted me to bless this nation, Egypt. God wanted me to be a blessing to the whole world. You meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Y'all feel? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. We know in part. And what I'm saying, you talk to him with, he, with his brothers, he's talking halfway crazy. Why? Because he has a part. But he don't have it all. Why? It hadn't been filtered with God. Y'all follow? Yep. Any questions so far? Y'all follow me so far? Mm. Yes, sir. We're about to go on some deep ground in there. Mm. <clears throat> we'll read some to y'all first. Some marks, marks.
Years ago, I had one of those, these dreams on New York, on New Year's Eve. He said he used to always think that New Year's God just gives him a square out of the year. In the dream, I was riding in a car with my friend Mark Joe, who is an evangelist. A pastor friend of mine was in the driver's seat. I was in the middle. Mark was sitting on my right by the passenger door. All three of us were together in front seat. The three, of, uh, the three of us began to discuss what God was saying about the coming year. Mark told me that he had just preached a prophetic message and God spoken to him. And in Mark's message, God was saying, that the coming year was going to be a year of darkness. Mm -hmm. The coming year was going to be a year of darkness. Mm -hmm. The pastor said, you know, Mark, I don't want to argue with you at all. I'm really just trying to understand what God is saying. And I really believe God spoke to me also. And when God spoke to me, he said, this was going to be a year of light. Mm -hmm. A year of light. One guy saying a year of darkness. Mm -hmm. The other guy saying a year of light. Like what he said in First Corinthians, he said, when we look and we see through a glass darkly, we get a part of it. We don't get a part of it. Mm -hmm. We don't get it all. Read verse 8. That's what I should have done right But love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. Read, read that again. For we know in part, we know in part. and we prophesy in part. No in part, we prophesy. Thank you. Y'all follow me so far. Any questions? I'm coming to ask me some questions if I start asking. Well, okay. You said we uh how we test that. Now we have the Bible, so if God tells us to do something, we can test it on the scripture. But Joseph didn't have the Bible. He was working with his heart. So I'm a little confused about when if you I, have if I you don't have the Bible. If I don't have the Bible and yeah. I want to test what is being said, yeah. I have to test it by what God is saying to us. So that I might get a better understanding. Um, if God talked to like in this case, God talked to two people. Mm -hmm. They appear to have yeah. two different yeah. revelations. Mm -hmm. Well, could that possibly be God? Yeah. One of them one of them, yeah. Possibly. Is it possible for both of right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it would be possible. We might have two seasons in there. One right and one part. If, if, if we see it in parts, yeah. yeah. The conversation went on and on. It wasn't an argument. By any means, it was a discussion, but they kept going back and forth, and I was sitting in the middle, watching them. I have I, as if I were watching a tennis match. Yeah. And suddenly I broke in, guys. Don't you understand? Don't you remember the story in the Bible about the ninth plague in Egypt? Darkness covered the whole land. Mm -hmm. But the children of Israel had light in their dwelling places. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So both of you are right. Mm -hmm. God is saying it's going to be a year of darkness for those who are not following him. Mm -hmm. And a year of light mm -hmm. for those who are mm -hmm. following him. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah, you're smiling now. 
But you see the difference. Yeah, I see the difference. See, see, it's telling me, because you've got enough of a fight. Yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. no. One of them jokes are dumb, man. One of them, he's, he's. No. Let me ask you a question. If, if a person gives a prophecy, and that prophecy does not come true, does that mean that person is a false prophet? No. It may not just it may not be time for it. Yeah. God says, if you say this, if you say this message this time, didn't God tell us in one of those verses that if a person prophesied and the prophecy didn't come true, that's a false prophet? Yeah. Oh, but yeah. okay, yes. I have a question. She like, like a lizard, you know, Okay, if somebody prophesies to you something. No, 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 that's not. Let me have you. Okay, you okay. Y'all think Jonah was a false prophet? No, no. Jonah is, but he wasn't false. What did God tell him to prophesy? Turn to God. No. God told him to tell the Ninevites he's going to wipe them out. He's going to destroy them because of their sin. They turned away from him. They've been in other gods. So he's going to wipe them out. So he told them what God told him to tell them. Mm -hmm. Did his prophecy come true? <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> no <it didn't. laughs> but you just told me. Well, but. but see what I'm talking about? I'm confused. <laughs> you told me if a man prophesied, and his prophecy don't come true, he's a false prophet. Love. No, it didn't come true. In fact, they repented. And because they repented, God changed what he's going to do. And he, instead of wiping them out, he forgave them. And you can tell, read it when you get a chance, Jonah. Jonah upset. Now, Jonah is not upset because his prophecy didn't come true. No. Jonah is upset because God forgave them. Mm -hmm. He wanted God to punish yeah. them. Yeah. He said, I ran away when you told me to go the first time. And the reason I ran away because I know you was going to be dead. He's going to have mercy on me. And I wanted you to wipe them out. Y'all feel it? Mm -hmm. Same thing happened to Isaiah. Same thing happened to Jeremiah. God gave them a prophecy. Didn't come out like they said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can tell a false prophet if you're a prophet, his prophecy don't come true. But there are extenuating circumstances. Mm -hmm. A man of God does exactly what God tells him. And still, he's in the dark. We know in part. We know in part. We know in part. What are you saying, Angel? I'm saying, whenever you're talking about God revealing to you his will, God revealing to you his destiny for your life, you have to take into account you only get part of it. Mm -hmm. At best, you don't know it all. Mm -hmm. You think you know it all. Mm -hmm. You want to know it all. Mm -hmm. You're going to try your best to follow what you think you know. But the truth be told, there are some parts about that kind of fuzzy about. Mm -hmm. Some parts of that you're not sure about. What about that, Dewana? Yeah. You see what I'm saying so far? 
Hey, it's going to get worse than that tonight. <laughs> Read uh, chapter 14. I really want y'all to read the first 32 <clears throat> verses. What book we in? Why you want to go to another book? It's only 13. If I told you 14, I want you to stay in the same book. If you just got to read out of 13. And... I tell you what, to make it easy on y'all, mm -hmm. let's just uh, start reading. Read the first 32 verses. It's going to make it easier. Then we'll read the last ones. You say read the first one? 32. 32. I want chat because she sleeps back there. Yeah, right. I want you to read the first 32 then. Corinthians 14, 32? Yeah. Oh, you were not in 13. We were reading 13 and 9. Right? Yes, I was. So you lost it that day. That's all right. Wait, maybe. 1, 2, 32? Yeah. I was going to stay there a while. 1 Corinthians 14, 1, 2, 32? Start at verse 1. Stop when I tell you to. <laughs> <laughs> it won't hurt as bad that way. Okay. Let love be your highest goal. Well, she act like I'm fully teeth or something. No, I'm not. Let yeah. love be your highest goal, but you should also desire the special ability the Spirit gives, especially the ability to prophesy. Back back. You we should do that again. It said, I'm, I'm reading the uh, New Living Translation. Just read it. Okay. Let love be your highest goal. But you should also desire the special ability the Spirit gives, especially the, especially the, the ability to prophesy. The Spirit gives. You see, so talking about the abilities of the Spirit gives, spiritual gifts, and the ability of prophecy. Mm -hmm. Read up, read up. For if you have the ability to speak in tongues, you will be talking only to God. Since people won't be able to understand you, you will you will be speaking by the power of the Spirit, but it will all be mysterious. But one who prophes whose prophecy strengthens others, encourages them, and comforts them. A person who speaks in tongues is strengthened personally, but one who speaks a word of prophecy strengthens the entire church. I wish you could all speak in tongues, but even more, I wish you could all prophesy. For prophecy is greater than speaking in tongues, unless someone interprets what you are saying so that the whole church will be strengthened. Dear brothers and sisters, if I should come to you speaking in an unknown language, how would, how would that help you? But if I bring you a revelation or some special knowledge of prophecy or teaching, that will be helpful. Even lifeless instruments like the flute or the harp must play the notes clearly or no one will recognize the message. And if the burglar doesn't sound I'm sorry if the burp yeah if the burper doesn't sound a clear call how would the soldiers know they so are being bugle. called about bugle 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 it's the same for you if you speak to the people in the words they don't understand how will they know what you are saying you might as well be talking into empty space. There are many different languages in the world, 
and every language has meaning. But if I don't understand a language, I will be foreign to someone who speaks it. And the ones who speak it will be a foreigner to me. And the same is true for you, since you are so eager to have special abilities the Spirit gives. Speak those that will strengthen the whole church. So anyone who speaks in tongues should pray also for the ability to interpret what has been said. For if I pray in tongues, my spirit is praying. But if I don't understand what I am, but I don't understand what I am saying. Well then, what shall I do? I will pray in the spirit. I will also pray in the words I understand. I will sing in the spirit and I will also sing in the words of I understand. But if you praise God only in the spirit, how can those who don't understand you praise God along with you? How can they join you in giving thanks when they don't understand what you are saying? You will be giving you will be giving thanks very well, but it won't strengthen the people who hear you. I thank God that I speak in tongues more than any of you. But in a church meeting, I would rather speak five understandable words to help others than 10,000 words in an unknown language. Dear brothers and sisters, don't be childish in your understanding of these things. Be innocent as babes when it comes to the evil, but be mature in understanding matters of, the, of all this kind. It is written in the scripture, I will speak to my own people through strange languages and through the lips of foreigners, but even then, they will not listen to me, says the Lord. So you see that speaking in tongues is a sign, not for believers, but for unbelievers. Mm -hmm. Prophecy, however, is the benefit of believers, not unbelievers. Even so, if unbelievers or people who don't understand these things come into your church meeting and hear every everyone speaking in an unknown in an unknown language, they will think you are crazy. Yeah. But, but if you but if all of you are prophesying and unbelievers or people who don't understand these things come into your meeting, they will be convinced convicted of sin and judged by what you say. As they listen, their secret thoughts will be exposed and they will fall to their knees and worship God, declaring God is truly here and among you. Well, my brothers and sisters, let's summarize. When you meet, when you meet together, one will sing, another will teach, another will tell some special revelations God has given. One will speak in tongues and the other will interpret what is said. But everything that is done must be must strengthen all of you. No one, I'm sorry, no more than two or three should speak in tongues. They, they must speak one at a time and someone must interpret what they say. But if no one is present who can interpret, they must be silent in your church meeting and speak tongues to God privately. Let mm. two or three people prophesy and let the others evaluate what is said. But if someone is prophesying and sorry, if someone is prophesying, oh, I lost my thing. But if someone is prophesying, another person receives a revelation from the Lord. The one who is speaking must stop. In this way, all who prophesy will have a turn to speak one after the other so that everyone will learn and be encouraged. Remember that people who prophesy are in control of their spirit and can take turns. For God is not a God of disorder, but of peace. And it is all and it is all the meetings of God's holy people. Look at 
Do I what? I'm at 34. That's 34? Well, the next one, talking about letting women be quiet? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't want to talk about that tonight. I ain't got time to fuss with the one. We could deal with that another time. Okay, questions. Anybody got a question? Or you want me to ask a question? I got some. It was so much, you got to break it down. You read chapter 12, that's where Paul talks about spiritual gifts and the spiritual gifts that God gives the church. Mm -hmm. Look at chapter 12, I don't know, I want to say around 13, verse 13. Let's read that for somebody. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles, carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man, speaking by the Spirit of God, calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the same, the self-same spirit, dividing to every man severely as he will. For as the body is one, and has look, many, look at the last three verses of that chapter. To another faith by the same spirit, to another the gifts of healing, by the same spirit, to another the working of miracles. To a, chapter 12, the last verses? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 9, 10, 11? No, last three verses. The last three, three verses in chapter 12. 30 and 31. 30. Oh. 21, 30 and 31. All are verses. apostles. All, all are apostles. Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracle? Have all the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But COVID earnestly, the best gifts, and ye shall, ye shew I unto you a more excellent way. And yet I show unto you a more excellent way. Mm -hmm. You got a question, Jess? I have it. When you talk about gifts, he said, there are, there are diversity of gifts. God gives everybody gifts. Mm -hmm. Different levels. He said, but I'm going to give you a more excellent way. And what he does here, that he doesn't do in Ephesians. You know, Ephesians, you got the gifts of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. But here he says, I'm going to show you a more excellent way. That's chapter 12. What is chapter 13 about? 13. Love. Yeah. Y'all had to look and say, you're supposed to know that. <laughs> no. First Corinthians chapter 13. That's love. What's the more excellent way? Love. love. What's the first thing you say? Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love. Words. Huh? Mm -hmm. Sound the brass teeth when they I can have the gift of prophecy. I can tell you everything I'm going to have before it He said, but if I don't have love. Yeah, yeah. I can give you everything I got. I can give enough money away to feed all the children in the world. But if I don't have love, mm -hmm. huh? Mm -hmm. okay. Love suffering all. Love blah like this. Love that that that. Love that that that. Mm -hmm. Love that that that. But then you get to verse nine. He says, "We know in part." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We prophesy in part, mm -hmm. but 
But there's a time when that which is in part has to be clarified, made clear. Say what? <laughs> you own it? You got it. So everybody got to Explain it to him. There are many parts of the body. Oh, okay. Okay. Talk about the Don't talk them tomatoes messing up. Time out, time out. Them tomatoes messing up. One man said it's going to be dark. The other man said it's going to be light. Guy sitting in the middle said, wait a minute. What does God say? Yeah. What does God's word say? Mm -hmm. Can I prove it by God's word? Mm -hmm. What are you saying? I'm saying, first of all, we got to admit that we get in part. Mm -hmm. I can't be dogmatic and say I got all of it. Yeah. I can't be dogmatic and say I know everything. I got to come to grips with it. I only know that which I've confirmed. Yeah. And I can only confirm with God's word. Either God reveals to me directly or God reveals to me indirectly. It's possible that God could reveal to me directly a prophecy, and I think I got it. But it's possible I don't got it. <laughs> could have messed up. Could have left a fact out. Could have thought I was listening to God, but in actuality, I was listening to the tomato plant. Mm -hmm. What about, is there an example of uh, Abraham and Isaac? And God told him to go up there, and you know, he only gave him partial of it. And they got there. And gave me the rest of it and is that an example? Would that be an example? It was more so like obedience. You think about Abraham and uh, his nephew? No, Isaac. His son. Wait, his son? Yeah, you know God told him to go up and kill Isaac. And uh, uh, really? offer a sacrifice. Well, oh, yeah, yeah. So he didn't know the sacrifice was going to be his son. God just told he, did, he did tell he me. Did. That was obedient. What well, about thy son, thine only son, Isaac? That was the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. He knew. The son didn't know. Oh, okay. Well, I got that wrong. That's okay. Ain't nothing unusual. That's why you got to know the pot. That's right. No, no. I'm, I'm messing with you. But see, the fact that me, you see how I say, I yeah. think it's in verse 13, and just yeah. after it was in 13. Because when you know, the more you know, the more that stuff can come together. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So the way you confirm it, you read it. Yeah. It's the actual word. Yeah, let's deal. Know. Let's deal with now. Let's deal with what you just said. What was his nephew name? Oh, uh, Lot. Lot. Oh, well, you girls show me no one's. <laughs> okay, Lot. Mm -hmm. When uh, they were having problems, too many pigs. I mean, yeah. too many, too many sheep. Yeah. Not enough land to give them grain. Yeah. He said we got to separate. Mm -hmm. What did Abraham tell Lot? The speckle. Yeah. Well, you you pick what you want. Pick what, what you want. Pick what you want. If you go left, I go right. And Lot goes out there and he picks what he thought was the best land. Mm -hmm. Down there toward the. Valley, the water comes down, the grass all green. Of course, there's some demons down there, but that's mm -hmm. something else. Okay, well, what did God tell Abraham? Now, Abraham called himself letting Lot have the pick. Mm -hmm. Now, God is saying, I'm going to give you a promise, a land. Mm -hmm. 
Flowing mm -hmm. with milk and honey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. We see part B. When did when did Abraham first see the land? He already there. Yeah. He already there. He stands exactly where Lot stood. And God said, turn around. I say, now everything you saw, mm -hmm. I'm going to give it to you. Mm -hmm. That included mm -hmm. what a lot of picked up. Mm -hmm. He was already on Canaan and didn't even know it. He was already in the promised land and didn't realize it. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. He was already at where God promised him he would get, but he don't know it yet mm -hmm. until God shows him. But see, sometimes we think God going to show us where he wants us to be when we get in our palace. <laughs> sometimes we have to get there in a tent. Oh, mm -hmm. That's a word right there, boy. That's a good word. He's in a tent. Sometimes God is showing you already, you don't know it. He never saw the milk. Never saw the but he saw the land. Everything your eyes can see, I'm going to give it to you. And God gave it to you. What are you trying to say? I've got to understand that. Sometimes God takes me to a place that I don't discern exactly what he's trying to tell me, but I got to hold on to God. Sometimes God takes me to where he's promised me, and I don't clearly understand the promise, but I got to hold on to what he told me. Because if he said this is going to happen, mm -hmm. I got to trust God. Mm -hmm. He don't see what Moses saw mm -hmm. when God let him look over. But they're looking at the same land. Mm -hmm. Y'all feel it? Mm -hmm. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Now, what happened in Acts chapter 2? In Acts chapter, you ain't got time to read it now. Y'all supposed to know. In Acts chapter 2, when the Spirit came, the Bible said they began to speak in unknown tongues. Now, what happened in Acts chapter 2? Ain't nothing like that mess that comes on in Acts. And it happens in Corinthians 14. Okay. Mm -hmm. What's the difference? Okay. The interpreter. In chapter 2, in chapter 2, you have people from different. Okay, we got we got a Japanese, we got a Chinese, we got a Russian, you got a Vietnamese. Peter's preaching. Yeah. Was he preaching an unknown tongue? No. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. But they understood, didn't they? Because she understood. They was talking yeah. in spirit. In Japanese. Mm -hmm. She understood in Chinese. Mm -hmm. She understood in Vietnamese. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They all understood in their language. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't one person talking. And they are amazed. So they're speaking in other How you don't know my language? How he's speaking in my tongue? Mm -hmm. And the guy said, no, no, he's speaking in my tongue. Mm -hmm. No, he's speaking in my tongue. You see the difference? Mm -hmm. yeah. They're speaking in a foreign tongue. But it ain't about confusion. Mm -hmm. It's about clarity. 
Now, I don't know what happened, but somewhere between Acts 2 and this jump that happens in, in 1 Corinthians 14, is so they start getting up. And first of all, Paul has a concern about order in the church. Mm -hmm. He says, you know, you got what's been going on, you got people. They were staying too long in church because everybody told me they got a revelation. And so they start speaking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they said, you know, ooh, I wish I knew what he said. Mm -hmm. So then they said, that ain't nothing but wasting time. Paul said, you ain't got no minute doing that unless you have an interpreter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. So that became the revelation. The problem is that when the interpreter interpreted, sometimes it sounds legit. Sometimes it sounds like a lot of bull. Mm -hmm. I'm going to know which is which. Chastity? I don't know which is which. Which is legit, which is the bull. You never know. Unless you know their language. What's the test? The word. Huh? Is it the God. word? Is it in line the with word. God's word? In line with God's word. God's word. <laughs> Nobody can claim they got a revelation from God that you can't find or confirm in God's word. You said God told you? God is not going to ever tell you anything that contradicts mm -hmm. his word. Mm -hmm. That's why I got to memorize his word. I got to meditate on his word. I got to study his word. I got to know his word. Tell you about to mess up because you had a little fact wrong. But I got to make sure that word, I got to know it. Mm -hmm. yeah. so that's why I go to that written word to confirm. And I always, I like to memorize it. But I say, don't, don't ever get in a habit of memorizing passages and think you, uh, you're all right. Now, what I did today, I had everybody to quote me some scripture. Mm -hmm. Everybody got something they can memorize. But I, well, Reverend Bill, I'm the glory. But he used to love to quote, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house, I'm in my mansion. If it were not so, I would not have told you. I know what that said. He said, if it were not so, I would have told you. He said, I would not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he said it so much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he's all right. Mm -hmm. See, that's why every now and then you need to read it so you make sure what you memorize is right. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I want to make sure whatever I memorize is the actual word. The word, the written word, that's the, that's the key. Mm -hmm. Like I always have that. The written word yeah. is going to be my standard. Mm -hmm. When I start memorizing scripture, when I start meditating on it, I meditate on the written word. So when God starts talking me out of his word, I know. got to be God. Why? Because it's the word. Mm -hmm. It's the word. Y'all feel? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, he says, now you got two things happening. You got somebody want to speak in tongue, somebody want to prophesy. He says, now it's a gift. Speaking tongue is a gift to the spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You speak to them. You claim you're speaking because the Spirit told you what to say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The only problem is when the Spirit told you what to say, He didn't tell you in English. <laughs> he told you in your good God. Question Do you know what He told you? In fact, the matter is, there are some people who claim God told them to speak in tongues. Mm. And they didn't know what they were saying. Mm. 
Now let me make myself clear. Okay. He says speaking in tongue is legit. Mm -hmm. He's not saying it's not legit. He's not saying speaking in tongue is not a gift of the spirit. Mm -hmm. He's not saying people who do it ain't right. What he is saying though, and ask yourself a question. When I'm speaking in tongues in church, am I trying to do it for clarity or for confusion? Because mm -hmm. if I'm speaking in tongues in church and nobody knew what I'm saying, mm -hmm. who have I help? Nobody. Nobody. Mm -hmm. He says, so then you ought to have an interpreter. Then the interpreter can interpret. Mm -hmm. But then you ask yourself, why would God have you speak in tongues and have her to interpret? I mean, God could have just told you in English. And have you say in English. And we all know what you're talking about. He said, I'm not saying it's not legit, but if this is something you do, he said, you probably ought to do that at the house. Mm -hmm. See, if, I, if the Holy Ghost is talking to me and I'm talking in an unknown tongue, I've got this spiritual high going on. I can do it better at home mm -hmm. and at church. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, the Church of Christ in the world is the apostles. They, they say it's another level. Because the whole concept is they want you to believe that they are a little higher. People who speak in tongues are a little higher than you. Mm -hmm. You a little nuisance. Because y'all don't speak in tongues. Mm -hmm. Well, see, that's what he's dealing with in chapter 12. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to get in trouble, even in the You're going to get in trouble when you think you are better than somebody mm -hmm. because you got a gift mm -hmm. uh, that the other person don't have. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Everybody got a gift. Mm -hmm. But don't get all excited about the one you got, like your gift is superior to somebody else's gift. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem most people speak the tongue. They, oh, they go all of you, are, you, you, are, you keep on hanging around you. One day the Lord might let you have mm -hmm. <laughs> gift of tongues. I said, no, it's better to have the gift of prophecy. Mm -hmm. When God gives you a word to share. Mm -hmm. And then when you share that word, you share, and it builds up the whole congregation. In other words, we ought to have stuff going on in the church that people understand, mm -hmm. yes, instead of have stuff going on in the church that's confusing folks. Mm -hmm. yeah. You understand that, Brian? You got a problem with that? You ever spoke it down? Keep praying the Lord might give it to you before you die. <laughs> All right. Anybody in here got a, a Bible verse you know from memory? Yeah, I do. You want to share it? That's why we're going to take you last. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. No, we're going to let him go next to last. Oh, you're going last, Clint, because you, oh. you're supposed to know more. I, mean, I don't know if like, Jesus will. Because I don't know half you Negroes already. That's what Chastis thought she was going to say. That's what it. you got, Tunis? That's you got a Bible verse you memorized? You don't know no Bible verse. None. And all the time you go into Sunday school, don't come to my office no more. You get a Bible verse memorized. You only have one Bible verse memorized in the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation. And you got nerves in them in the verse. Come on, Chastity. <laughs> no, no, no. Give me a verse. I ain't playing. You think? Yeah, I'm serious. It's a heart attack, Negro. Oh, no. It's hard to think. Yeah. Who knows what spot like? No, no, there ain't no spot. All the verses they got in the Bible, and you ain't got one of them around. Tell me on a spot. You ain't know nothing but Jesus web, and I took that from you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to say it wrong, so I'm just going to leave it. No, just say what you know. I, can't, I ain't talking about what you know. You say it with a different translation. You ain't got to say it wrong. 
She said, boy, this is sad, man. This is really embarrassing, girl. Mm -hmm. Anybody know first song? The one I just preached out of Sunday? <laughs> this past Sunday? You don't know none of the verses I preached? <clears throat> I said, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, yeah. nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. But the delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night, and she be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth the truth that sees his leaves also shall not wither. And whatsoever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so. But like the chaff which the wind drives away. And therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sins in the congregation. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous. For the way of the ungodly shall. I preach hard suddenly. And sure. And you can't tell me one of those verses I just shared. That's sad. That's no big man to cry. Mm. What about you, Brianna? Well, maybe five fifteen, your shall And you say you didn't know a verse. You know? Yeah, I didn't know one. Well, help your friend then. She knows one too. Oh, my God. Okay, God. That's what? <laughs> this is embarrassing. Um, Give me one, Chastity. Because that red going to take it. He trying to take them. <laughs> Chastity closed that Bible up. She's trying to cheat. He's <laughs> trying to cheat. dog on the phone. She's reading the Bible on turn. Got to look it up. Oh, that's a doggone shame. I am hurt. Come on. Uh, In the, the beginning was the word and the word was God. <laughs> right. Genesis 1. That's one. You can't get one. Well, I'm, I'm going with old faith. But she read, she read that out. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. It showed something in Acts. That was not, you know, because that's First John. I mean, not First John, but that's uh, St. John. St. John. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. Same as in the beginning with God. All things made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. Right. Why you didn't say that? Come here, come here, you. Hey, I know come I here. know part of it. The word. Give me a verse. Uh, I know the plans that I have for you, that you may prosper, that you may have hope. Keep reading. That, that's not Keep reading. Uh, Keep reading. Keep reading. That is Jeremiah. I just want to make sure it wasn't what you was talking about. See? Ah, that's Jeremiah 29. I'm going with the old faithful for 500. <laughs> John 316. For God so loved the world that he that's gave his only begotten son. She could have said that. She could have said that. Should, that. <laughs> should not perish, but have everlasting life. She could have said, she could have said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That's why I'm mad with her. The Lord is my shepherd. Everybody know that. Yeah. I know the other youngsters don't know it, but you ought to know that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know, yeah. Why didn't you say it? Shame to shame. <laughs> you, you ain't ashamed to tell me the words to, to that hip hop song, you know, you know that. No, I don't. I don't hear hip hop. What? She don't hear this good no more. You know what she said? Hey, the uh, I am the living bread which came down from heaven, John 6 51. Did you see him memorize that when he didn't make that movie? No. Tomatoes. Not sure about mine. That's a prophetic That's a prophetic word. I'm just all serious. Now you shouldn't claim to be a Christian. And not know the word. Mm -hmm. yeah. Knowing the word ain't got nothing to do with being a preacher. No <coughs> word has to do with being a Christian. Mm -hmm. I can't say I'm a Christian and I don't want to know God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I can't can't claim to know God and not know His word. Mm -hmm. You got to put some time in it every day. Every day. You got to read something. Yeah, I let the, 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 the day go by without reading something. And I'm going to tell you something. If you take uh, 
Five verses and read those same five verses every day for a month. You got to be retarded not to memorize that. Mm -hmm. If you wake up every morning, read the same, I don't care what five verses they are. If you wake up every morning, read five verses for, for 30 days. I guarantee you, you won't have it in your memory. Mm -hmm. The first time I quoted, God be merciful unto us and bless us. He calls his face to shine for That's John, the Psalm 67. My daddy and them would read that every morning for devotion to start church on. You know what I found out? I had memorized it. One Sunday morning I got there, I couldn't find a Bible. And when they was reading it, I started quoting it and realized I didn't need a Bible. Mm -hmm. It was already in my memory. Because every Sunday, that's what they read. Mm -hmm. God's too good to us. Mm -hmm. To not treat him better than we do. Mm -hmm. Everybody ought to know some, some chapters, not just verses. Some chapters. The older you get, man, it's, it's, you can't retain stuff like you used to. But you could you retain some of them. <laughs> you might get some words mixed up, but you, you ought to have the basic flavor. God is my refuge and my strength. Very present help in times of trouble. Stop. Stop. the Lord. The Lord has said, the world is a big world. You don't know something. Yeah. Wait on the Lord. Mm -hmm. Be of good courage. He should strengthen that. Y'all know something. Know something. You got a mic? You raise your hand and tell me one. I can. Tell me one. And now unto him who is able to do exceedingly above all that we can ever ask him for a man according to the Lord. Excuse me, I'm not going to be able to do all that we can ask him for. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. The ones you know, repeat them. The ones you don't know, learn them. Mm -hmm. Talks about what time is it? Eight twenty-one. Eight twenty-one. Ooh, Moses. Oh, I'm on tomato time. Okay. <laughs> he said, ooh, yeah. No, no man knows the time. So <laughs> <laughs> time of the hour. I still haven't got over that. You're not alive. <laughs> that was prophetic, didn't I? That was prophetic, didn't I? I oh, didn't look at it. Thou should not lie. <laughs> you remember, he's been whispering to you before. I don't know why he is zeroed in on that chapter. Mm -hmm. um, I need some of my read you all. talking about when he's riding in the car with his wife and she would just quiz him on certain passages so he just pick it. She might pick a question and ask him and he had to tell her, tell her where he found it where she would look to find it. Oh. And uh, here it goes. Not only is the Bible important, it can be fun too. Before we had apps on our phones, I used to buy Bible trivia books. Every time a new one came out, I would get it. When I was in a traveling ministry, and David, as his wife, and I on the road, I would have her quiz me. The books had a beginning section and an intermediate section and an expert section. So we'd be driving down the road, and she would ask me a question such as, who were us and buzz? Now, you might think, 
it's not very important to know the answer to this question. But it was interesting to me because I wanted to know everything mm. I possibly could about the Bible. And in case you're wondering who Buzz and Buzz are, check out Genesis 22, verses 20 through 24. <laughs> 20 through 24. Oh. Uh, okay. After this, a message arrived that Milcah, the wife of Abraham's brother Nahor, had borne him eight sons. The names were Er, the oldest, Bug, the next oldest, Camille, father of Abraham, Jesse, Hazel, Bildash, Jack, Jack, Jack. So now you know where Uz and Buzz is. <laughs> <laughs> now you think somebody asked you where Uz and Buzz are found, you would have known where they were? No. I've read that a hundred times. It's so bad. When he, he told me when I was reading this, I thought he said Ezekiel 45. You're talking about Genesis 22. <laughs> I gotta see what he's even part of five what I'm supposed to be looking at. But anyway, you, you get the point. I used to hate trivial because to me I didn't understand the logic of it. But but then to know you ought to know the mind. When my daddy was still alive and I was around the house, instead of me looking at the concordance, I wanted to preach on something. I could post scriptures. Mm -hmm. I ain't like shit. I could push it. Just couldn't know where they found. Yeah. I say, Daddy, where you find so and so and so? Oh, so we turned this on. Wow, wish I could do that. Mm -hmm. Wish I could do that. Yeah. Well, I've lived long enough I could do that with some. I'm still not good as he was. Mm -hmm. And then you see the um, you know, Carter says cripple you anyway. But the point I'm making is is that you ought to know. Some scriptures, you ought to know. You ought to know where some things are found, you know. You know, I was thinking about that passage uh, the other day. So I don't remember, it looked like it was in, I forgot if it was in chapter 6 or chapter 7. I don't know if it was in chapter 7. You know, we were talking about that, that prayer thing. What's Matthew 7 and 7? Mm -hmm. Asking it should be good? Seeking you should find? Knocking the door with you? Matthew 6. Is that what it say? Judge not. Oh, 7 said yes. Asking it should be good. Seeking you should find? I was teaching this lesson and uh, a girl, uh, Ella Hudson. I said, I'm, done. I'm praying for stuff and God don't answer my prayer. And I wanted to get that part that I did in the new members class, Matthew 7. Well, I wasn't sure it was in 7 or 6. I said, well, now 6 is where you have a model prayer. Mm -hmm. After these men are there for prayer, he out for the right hand. Mm -hmm. That's Matthew 6. Mm -hmm. yeah. But Matthew 7, this is where you get the pattern for praying. What is praying? Jesus oh. said praying is asking, oh, yes. seeking, 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 and not knocking. Asking, seeking, seeking, and knocking. That's okay. When you ask God, he said, ask me, she'll be given. That means whoever asked God for it, will give it to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He said, ask me, she'll be given. Mm -hmm. If it's in his will. 
It's part. It's part of it. <laughs> Get in the water. She said that just part. Just part. He says the asking in Matthew seven implies that whatever you ask for is in confines of God's will. Mm -hmm. Because I can't ask God to do something that's contrary to His will. Mm -hmm. I can't ask God to help me commit adultery. Mm -hmm. I can't ask God to help me commit murder. Why? Because that's contrary mm -hmm. to the nature of God. Mm -hmm. It's against God's nature. I'm not going to insult God by asking Him to do something that's contrary to His nature. You hear me? Asking, seeking, and not. Is there anything you got to take my word for it? Yes. Ask, seek, and knock. And knock. Is Ask. anything in God's will? If there's anything out of God's will that I can keep praying for, mm. She don't believe in God. And I'm going to pray to God that he saved her. Is that a decent prayer? Yeah, yeah it's a decent prayer. But how is that? The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to whosoever believed in him. Should not perish, but have everlasting life. So that's still in, I can still pray that? Yeah. Yeah, but it's up to her. If she don't believe in God, God ain't going to save nobody that don't believe in Him. I just told you. That's why I quoted that. You thought I'm just quoting that to show you my knowledge? I got a question. Sunday in Sunday school. That's Sunday. I got a question. Is it, well, is it, I'm a little stumped. Wait, 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 I can't even think. Like, I'll make sure I got an answer this point. <laughs> so even though she doesn't believe in God, right. I can still pray to God and ask him to save her. Because the Bible says God will <laughs> that all men be saved. Yeah. But God ain't going to save her if she don't believe in him. But God is so awesome. God can change her mind. So when she starts believing, mm -hmm. and then he can say, mm -hmm. that's what you're talking about, knocking. Mm -hmm. Even though I'm praying for something outside of his will, I can keep knocking. Why? Because he has the power to break it in his will. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? I'm doing it on God's word. He says, God will. That all men, all women, that God, all people, we say, Lord, you say you want to save everybody. <laughs> save that to make it. Save that to make it. Yeah. No, you got you got a bunch of tomato boy. You got a lot of knocking. You got a lot of knocking to do. They don't want the right to That's going to contrary to your will. So <laughs> <laughs> when God changes, she gonna drop your behind. That's the first thing. She, first thing she gonna do is say, "I'm gonna get me somebody who wants to do what's right." Any questions? Comments? <clears throat> Wait, y'all want me to show y'all got this? Y'all got this lesson? Mm -hmm. Y'all got something out of this lesson? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Sick report. Tell me about your sister. Uh, I'm going to be moved to a, a rehab pretty soon, maybe tomorrow. But she still can't walk? Uh, she's, yes, yeah, yeah. she can walk, but it's not real good, so we can't go to rehab. Okay. Fellow on that right hip. 
did do a little fracture, but it's the can that they didn't have to operate on. So okay. you got to do. Uh, they made it heal up and yeah, she's strong and strong. Yeah, and, 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 and her friend, Miss Miss Peggy, she was in Washington State with her son. And, oh, really? She yeah, gone? He come down and got her this past weekend. Oh, oh, man, I want to miss her. That's my buddy. I want to uh, say goodbye. Yeah. Uh, that was it. He had, uh, mm -hmm. but I uh, yeah, came in yet. Uh, mentioned that uh, that's going to really, that really, was, that was a t they met, they, they met uh, when my sister was waiting on the ambulance to come pick her up and she was all sad and just, Peggy didn't know her, she just came with my sister spent some time. and spent some time with her and so everything going to be all right and that's how that started. How they got mm -hmm. together. How they got together. And she brought her to church. Mm -hmm. And she come to church more than church. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> Boy, he loved using you, Chess. That's okay. She does. Because I'm the one in that Bible study. That's all that matters. Mm -hmm. You have to see her, Chester. She come on regular, though. I'm serious. She came on the whole lot of them, not just you. She beat a lot of them coming. All right. Anybody else? Sick report. Sister Penny's doing all right. Probably the mayor. Mm -hmm. Anybody seen? Mm -hmm. Where's she? No. Very busy. Say she, she saw the thing too. Miss Busy. What about Lorenzo? Mm -hmm. huh? I had a thing Lorenzo. Uh, I talked to Brother Anderson with the others. Coming along, but you were slow. Yeah. So keep praying. Baby. Yeah. 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 Y'all were here for the last Wednesday, Sister White said that her nephew tried to commit suicide. So she, he really didn't. Say the ball was on the trampoline and he fell and busted up his knee mm -hmm. real, real bad. And so he's having a time recovering from that. But he didn't die and all he's trying to commit suicide. So uh, let's continue to pray for him. And I think uh, Carol. So I was praying for somebody who had cancer. And then they say Carol had trouble with her knee too. Yeah. yeah. She said her knee swell, swell, swell. She got a shot or something. Well, oh, she's on side. She's on line. The pictures in the choir, she said she couldn't walk. She was working on Yeah, her knee was swell. She couldn't walk. Uh, no, uh, Nancy Brown said her granddaughter is now in therapy and she's eating and walking now. Thank you. Nancy Brown's granddaughter. Continue to pray for Sister Brown's granddaughter and Sister Brown. Anybody else got a prayer request? Oh, man, y'all let the day session beat y'all again. Really? Yeah. It's just part of it. Yeah, it's 13. Yeah, it's 13. We wouldn't have made it because 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Oh, we are real. Yeah, 13 to me. Yeah, we are. They just two up in 10. We still have been on. There's a lot of trophies that don't come no more. All right, let's have our closing prayer. Y'all get another. Y'all don't mean, online. at 8 o'clock no more. Oh, yeah. We got some online. How many get online? online. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody text me. Welcome. <laughs> she can know number me to be on there? Ten. No, that ain't the right number. Uh, that's never the right okay. number. We're going to do the closing prayer today. For some reason. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for blessing us this evening, Father. Thank you for the wonderful word of God. Hope that we can put this lesson in our hearts and minds because you are our Savior. You are the God, the Lord of hope. Thank you, Father, for the lesson, the teacher, and all that are present. Now, take us home safely, Father, and please let us find our homes. Bless that we have in peace. We ask all this in Jesus.
So we had seven online. I didn't say that. Yep. 